Huh, okay. This this literally is the worst possible news we could have gotten today. Uh, everything is terrible and everything sucks. All right, guys, what's going on? Linky here. And if that little intro statement thing about the world being terrible led you to believe anything, it is that this video is going to be really rough. I've never done Avatar content on this channel. Um, I've wanted to for a long time, but what you guys need to understand is basically that Avatar is probably one of my favorite media franchises ever. Pokemon, Avatar... Those are my top two. Avatar might even be number one. To show that I grew up watching Avatar Last Airbender, Legend of Korra. It's a show that I've recently really gotten back into, been collecting the comics, uh, catching up on collecting all the comics that they've released, uh, catching up on collecting the novels about Avatar Kyoshi that they've released, just trying to really sink my teeth into this world again. Um, and one of the things that really brought my love for it back is that back in 2018, in September, October of 2018, Netflix and Nickelodeon and its creators, Mike, uh, Michael Dante, Dante DiMartino and Brian Konietzko, put out a statement saying that they would be doing a Netflix live action remake of the original Avatar The Last Airbender show. And that was amazing news. It was a validation from almost every single fan of this franchise that this can become a Netflix Game of Thrones. This The story is so good. The characters are so well fleshed out. The universe is so rich with lore and imagination and creativity that a live action series would be fantastic for growing the audience for it. And it was incredibly exciting. It was exciting to know that Mike and Brian, uh, Avatar's original creators, Legend of Korra's creators, were going to be at the helm as executive producers and showrunners, working with Netflix and their vast swaths of money uh, to make this a reality. It was great that it had backing by Nickelodeon and by some of the original uh, people who worked on the show. Uh, some of the original guys who worked on the music for the show were coming back, some old writers. It was all really promising. And since then... Avatar has had a massive resurgence in popularity. When it came back to Netflix, the original show, uh, it holds the record for the longest number of consecutive days in Amazon's top in Netflix's top ten. Uh, Legend of Korra comes out this Friday, the thir uh, this Friday the fourteenth, uh, to Netflix as well. It's going to get another boost in popularity. And just knowing that there was this massive undertaking of a live action series coming soon was just such an amazing idea. And it was just so great to hear. They were, they were saying all the right things about it, that they weren't going to whitewash the cast like the uh, M. Night Shyamalan movie attempt at doing Avatar Live Action did back a couple years ago uh, that Mike and Brian had no, pretty much no involvement in. Uh, it was just... There were so many positives for what this would become, and everybody was really optimistic. The problem was that we started to not get a lot of news for a while, and... It was a little concerning. It was like, oh, okay, maybe it's coronavirus uh, dealing uh, that is halted production, halted uh, prep, all these different things. Who knows what could be going on? We just, we have absolutely no idea. Uh, it could be a number of things. And we just kind of rode with the wave, rode the wave of it. We're like, stuff is happening. There's new Avatar comics coming out, new Avatar books. Uh, Avatar is incredibly popular. These are all good things. The live action series that was originally slated for this year, probably next year. And the next year we could possibly expect it. Who knows? And then we get today. Today I'm recording this on the 12th of August. Uh, it's 2.30 in the afternoon. And Mike and Brian have both put out their own statements. And I'm going to read Mike's to you first because uh, he's the guy who does a lot of the extra Avatar content, writing comics, consulting on books. He's the big guy with that. Uh, Brian does it too, but to a lesser extent. Uh, and it says, and I'm going to read it verbatim to you and I'm going to link both posts. They both put them on Instagram. I'm going to link them in the description down below so you guys can read them as well. Uh, it's an open letter to Avatar The Last Airbender fans. And it says, Many of you have been asking me for updates about the Avatar live action Netflix series. I can finally tell you that I am no longer involved with the project. In June of this year, which is a while ago, after two years of development work, Brian and I made the difficult decision to leave the production. When Brian and I signed on to the project in 2018, we were hired as executive producers and showrunners. In a joint announcement for the series, Netflix said that it was committed to honoring our vision for this retelling and to supporting us on creating the series. 
and we expressed how excited we were for the opportunity to be at the helm. Unfortunately, things did not go as we hoped. Look, these things happen. Productions are challenging, unforeseen events arise, plans have to change. And when those things have happened at other points during my career, I try to be like an air nomad and adapt. I do my best to go with the flow, no matter what obstacle is put in my way. But even an air nomad knows when it's time to cut their losses and move on. You can tell he wrote Tenzin and Korra because it's very similar. I started to reevaluate what my tr what is truly important in my life and what I wanted to do with what's left of it. I took some of Uncle I took some advice from Uncle Iroh. I looked inward and started asking myself the big question: Who are you and what do you want? I also sought wisdom from Stoic philosophers who were big on differentiating between what is within our control and what isn't. I realized I couldn't control the creative direction of the series, but I could control how I responded, so I chose to leave the project. It was the hardest professional decision I've ever had to make, and certainly not one that I took lightly, but it was necessary for my happiness and creative integrity. And who knows? Netflix's live-action adaptation of Avatar has the potential to be good. It might turn out to be a show many of you end up enjoying. But what I can be certain about is that whatever version ends up on screen, it will not be what Brian and I had envisioned or intended to make. I also want to be clear that this doesn't mean the end of my involvement in the Avatar universe. These stories and characters are important to me, and the renewed interest and excitement in Avatar and Korra has been inspiring to see. Writing this letter has left me with a very heavy heart. I know many of you will be disappointed and frustrated by the news I am. I get it. I share your disappointment and frustration. I also recognize this creative setback is small compared to the problems we're all facing as a society right now. Thankfully, Iroh offered some wisdom for that too. Sometimes life is like this dark tunnel. You can't always see the light at the end of the tunnel, but if you just keep moving, you will come to a better place. May we all keep moving and come to a better place. Thanks for reading and for your continued enthusiasm for the Avatar universe. With gratitude, Michael Dante DiMartino. So that's Mike's statement. I'm going to go ahead and read Brian's right now as well. I apologize. This is a lot of verbal stuff, uh, but I felt it's very important to get this out of the way. So this is Brian's statement, also from Instagram. Before I get to the crux of this statement, I'd like to make it clear that I'm very aware and appreciative of the fact that I'm in an ex exceedingly fortunate position and that, have, and that the following issues are indeed good problems to have, even more so now that we are in the grips of a global pandemic and a cratering economy which have left millions unemployed. With that crucial context, this is for the US by the way, here is the big news for my little world. Michael DiMartino and I recently chose to leave Netflix's live adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender, the series he and I created together in 2002. We will have no involvement in the project moving forward. This is probably the most difficult decision that I have ever made, but there is no doubt in my mind that it was absolutely the right choice. When Netflix brought me on board to run this series alongside Mike two years ago, they made a very public promise to support our vision. Unfortunately, there was no follow through on that promise. Though I got to work with some great individuals, both on Netflix's side and on our own small development team, the general handling of the project created what I felt was a negative and unsupportive environment. To be clear, this was not a simple matter of us not getting our way. Mike and I are collaborative people. We did not need all of the ideas to come from us. As long as we felt these ideas were in line with the spirit and integrity of Avatar, we would happily have embraced them. However, we ultimately came to the belief that we would not be able to meaningfully guide the direction of the series. Though I am profoundly disappointed by how things turned out, there are wonderfully talented people who are still working on the series, some of whom Mike and I personally hired and got to know well during our time on the project. We worked, we worked very hard together towards a shared dream of how special this adaptation could be. I want to see them employed, and I hope they get the chance to do their best on the series. Perhaps the team that remains might still be able to make something fans of the original and an entirely new audience can enjoy. By and large, I have an incredibly charmed career, and I'm grateful for it. And I am enormously lucky for the amazing global community of fans that has grown around the shows Mike and I have created and run together. I will continue to be deeply involved in the Avatar universe, telling the stories my partner and I want to tell in a way we want to tell them. I will put my time, energy, and talents towards the projects that give me the most fulfillment and where I am afforded trust and respect. Life is too short to do otherwise. Brian Kunietzko. So those are two statements. And this is just a massively terrible blow for Avatar fans, for people who are just getting into the series. Um, 
It's awful. For the last two years, so many of us have been speculating, hopefully wondering what this series would look like, how it would be translated from a kid's show, how it would be translated from animation into a full-fledged Netflix series. There were a lot of hopes, uh, not by everybody in the community, because there were some who felt we didn't need it, but there were a lot of hopes from people like me who felt that a live action version of this story would be able to become just a cultural phenomenon. It's a fantastic story with almost no flaws. The characters are some of the most well-developed in, in TV history, uh, has one of the best redemption arcs in TV history, and the world and lore of the show is up there with some of the best fictional universes that have ever been created, at least in my opinion. To see that this live action remake has gone off the rails is, and we haven't even seen anything of it, is just awful. And by the way the creators are talking, it seems like they were sold a vision of what Netflix wanted to do with this series, and then they had the rug pulled out from under them. It seems like they weren't given the creative control that they wanted. It seems that they people were dragging their feet at every turn, and that what the series was eventually going to become was not what they wanted it to be. Now, based on their statements and based on what we know today, it seems that the show is still happening. It seems like Netflix is still moving forward. I mean, Netflix is all in on Avatar recently. Avatar coming to the uh, Netflix, the original. Korra coming to Netflix uh, on Friday. They're all in. And it seems like they're uh, trudging forward with this project, even without the original creators. And it seems like there was a lot of drama behind the scenes in developing this project. They're only in the development stage. Who knows if scripts have been written? Who knows how far along they've been? But everything up to this point has seemed like it's been a mess. And that's just, that's absolutely terrible to see from a series that is beloved by so many people. Uh, if I was in charge, like if I was Nickelodeon, uh, Viacom, who still own the rights to Avatar, if I was Netflix, I would scrap this completely. If, if it was up to me, I would cut our losses here and say, listen, look at how popular this show has become recently because of coronavirus, because of it hitting Netflix, people have time to watch it again. We do not want to put out a bad product. We already saw what happened when M. Night Shyamalan's uh, terrible Last Airbender movie was put out. Uh, it, it, it was terrible. It was awful. Nobody liked it. And we don't want to do this again. So it's just, if I was them, and I'm not them, I would say we are scrapping the live action project. We're going to go back to Mike and Brian, and we're going to say, Nickelodeon should say this. I don't think, I don't know if, what their relationship is with Netflix right now. They should say, hey, listen, we want you guys to develop a new animated Avatar series. We want to take the foundation of this franchise and we want to blow it up. That means we want to do more novels, more comics, a new Avatar uh, story being told in animation. Animation gets you a perfectly large audience. We don't, we don't need, even though this is what I want, we don't need to try to cater to a large crowd by doing real people. We can do animation. We can tell the story of maybe a past Avatar, maybe Yang Chen, Kyoshi, a brand new one we've never heard of. Uh, we can tell the tale of someone after Korra. Whatever you guys want to do, let's do it, and let's take the existing things that we do with this franchise, comic books, novels, and let's uh, blow it up. Let's maximize its potential here, and let's really do this franchise justice. That's what I would do. I don't think they're going to do that. Netflix seems like it's full steam ahead with this, and listen, I am perfectly open to being proven wrong on this, and that maybe... Mike and Brian wanted to take this series in a radically different way that wasn't like the original show and wasn't like the comics and they wanted to really change it and make it its own thing. And maybe Netflix was looking at this like, let's just take the original story, translate it to live action and make and add people getting killed and make it more graphic and more adult. And I would, wouldn't be against that idea Netflix had. Um, so if the series comes out and it surprises us, great, fantastic. But the fact that Mike and Brian are no longer involved opens up a lot of can of a lot lots of cans of worms. Is it canon to the comics and the books and the show? Uh, does it take the place of the original show in the in the the canon universe of Avatar? Is it its own separate thing? Is it even endorsed by the creators in Nickelodeon? Is this a legitimate thing in the eyes of of the people who crafted it? They're no longer involved. Um, what does this mean for comics and books and novels and video games moving forward? 
uh, because these had been coming out. The Shadow of Kyoshi and the Rise of Kyoshi, the first novels in Avatar, sold great. They're on the New York Times bestsellers list. They're fantastic canon additions to the world of Avatar. The Avatar Last Airbender and Korra comics are chugging along. They're doing some reprints this year, but there's solo comics coming out and all of these different things. Uh, Hitting Netflix for the first time becoming massive uh, social media pages being created for Avatar and it really just exploding into popularity. There's so much happening with the franchise right now and it feels like its legs have been kicked out from under it. So who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what the future of this franchise will be? I hope that the creators are heavily involved because they are the ones who know it best. And who knows? Maybe, maybe, just maybe. On the inside, they don't know what they're doing and who knows? <laughs> I mean, maybe Netflix will hit a hit a home run with this series if they continue to keep doing it. I don't know, but this is a terrible blow. Um, this is not what I wanted to be my first Avatar video on YouTube. This really uh, depressing, tragic news. Um, I want to do more talking about the lore and the world and the story of Avatar. And but this is what we're starting with, I guess. Uh, what are your thoughts? If you guys are fans of Avatar, I would love for you to let me know in the comments down below or follow me on Twitter and let me know there at LinkyYT uh, what your thoughts are on this news. Um, if you're getting into Avatar for the first time watching it on Netflix, what do you think? Had you even heard of this live action remake? What do you think the future of Avatar should be? Uh, let me know in the comments. I would love to just hear what all of you think. Uh, but for me and a couple of my friends, we were talking about this earlier today. This is just, this is a devastating blow. This is the worst news we could have gotten from this live action series. Um, and we'll just have to see what happens. Hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you all didn't enjoy the news because it sucked. But, uh, if you are excited for more avatar content and more content in general for me in the future, definitely let me know in the comments section down below. I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.